everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I was just about to talk, and Jim put his finger up and said, wait a minute, I forgot to turn the camera on. Good thing he's there, and he notices in the back it blinks if it's not on. If it's on, it blinks back there, and for me, I've got a little red dot on the screen over here. Well, today I want to talk about, um, I was listening to Bull's video, and his son has pink eye. At least they think it's pink eye. They were going to take him to the doctor. And I was thinking, you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical... Not, me, this is my disclaimer. So I'm just a person who has, through the years, learned how to do things without having to run to the doctor. Because when I grew up, you didn't really go to the doctor. Your parents knew a way of of fixing it or curing it or taking care of it without there was bag balm all the time or Indian salve were the things that we used a lot of on scratches and sores but anyways I was thinking of the pink eye when I was growing up we used boric acid it sounds sounds dangerous doesn't it to boric acid it was a boric acid eye wash well I, this one is crystals. This one is from a long time ago, so you don't use very much. But I bought another one because whenever my kids, this one is the newer one, and, um, and they made it like a powder. I bought it because every time my kids would have, um, would say that their kids had like coal in their eye or was getting pink eye, I used to send home a little bit, I'd make it up for them and send it home with them. And this way, if they have to, they can take the bottle. But I can't send them with my bottle because this one's mine. This one stays here so that in case I need it. And the boric acid, what it is, is it's it's um, an eye wash. It really helps. It's a very mild acid. It's so mild. It's not an acid that's going to burn you. It's just got a bad name. Why they gave it that name, I don't know, but they did. And what you do is you take a quarter teaspoon of this little crystals or powder. It's a powder now. It's not crystals. It used to be crystals. Take a quarter teaspoon of the powder and you put it in. I boil the water because I want the water to be sterilized. And then you cool the water down. And But you add a quarter teaspoon of the boric acid to a pint of um, water. And then you let it cool down. And what we do is we pour a little bit into a dish, put a little cup of cotton balls in the dish when it's not too hot. Now it's got to be cooled way down because you don't want to burn yourself or whoever you're going to treat. And then you would, in the in your eye, in the, you'd have them put their head back. And in this little part here, this little, this little divot, you drip water, drip the boric acid water. And when they open their eye, it's going to go in. And then you can wipe it off, if you like, with the, the cotton ball soaked in the boric acid. And this really works for, like, coal in your eye and you don't end up with pink eye. And if you have itchy eyes from allergies, this works good, too, for that. When I worked at the county home, we used to mix it up all the time. And there were certain residents that we used to use it on their eyes because their eyes used to get real mattery. Um, their eyes teared a lot or something, I don't know. And so we used to, and they had allergies apparently, so we used to wipe off their eyes with that. And that's what I wanted to um, tell you that you can use for pink eye, coal in the eye. Um, you don't, do not ingest this, it's bad for you. This stuff has used for a lot of irrita skin irritations. Um, it was even used for mouthwash. They don't say any of that on these bottles. They don't tell you, but you can Google it and it will tell you what it was used for and how to make mix it. Okay, that was... What, what huh? do you mean by coal in the eye? Coal in the eye? Like, oh, not, not black coal like you're putting in a fire. <laughs> That's what they need to hear. Okay, you know when you get a cold and you get that mattery stuff like it looks like nose stuff in your oh, eye green gunk. green gunk and you your eye won't open your lashes are stuck well they used to call it sand sand in the eye whatever but it was like it's from kids usually when they they rub their nose they'll rub their eye and that's how you get the pink eye 
a lot of times and you'll get coal in your coal it's like cold it's like but it's called coal it's not yeah. called cold in your eye <laughs> and that's what it is it's that mattery stuff the green gunk or stuff that gets in your eye okay and I want to talk about um, this book as long as I'm on this stuff this is another book and what does this book have this one tells um, like these kind of remedies so that when my kids when I when I die when I'm gone bury me if you can hang my clothes on a cherry tree if you like but I don't think you want to but this book also has um, like what they can do for a bee sting my daughter used to be extremely allergic to bees but this is mainly for honey bees but it did work for other bees but not as well but it works for a honey bee where you would if she got stung you just put a little bit of honey on the bite and the swelling would go completely down because she was really quite allergic to them. In fact, we have an EpiPen for that. Um, then it had sunburn, arthritis pain, um, to live longer, live a longer life. I even have that in here. And how do you live a longer life? You drink red wine. <laughs> or you could drink um, grape juice that's red the dark, juice. the dark grape juice, not the white grape juice, because it's the flavonoids that you want and it releases a chemical and slows down the aging and lengthens your life in years. That's what I wrote. And then there's dark chocolate is good for you, helps lower your blood pressure. You know, there's lots of stuff in here like chest congestion, natural form of antidepressant, act of kindness, when you receive an act of kindness, you give kindness, witness kindness, or serotonin in your brain raises. This is also strengthens your immune system. So if you do an, an act of kindness, it does all that good stuff for you. So, and then there's hot flashes and boils and reduced fever. There's a lot of stuff in this book. A lot of things that you would not think about, but if you know something that you are doing in oh. your family, Old-fashioned Old, wives' tales right. types of remedies. Like, I know a lot of you talk about comfrey. Whatever you use comfrey for, put it in a little book so that generations behind you, that are, or the ones that are coming up, I mean, that gen, those generations, they can um, learn what you did with it and how to use it, and they can pass it on to their children and their children and keep it going. So there's a lot of remedies out there that people... Um, no, and unless you write it down or tell it or some you have to write it down just write it down because when you tell it sometimes you lose you think gosh what did she do because like a lot of times my um years ago my sister used to call me and say what did mommy put in her dressing and it would be like well i was there the longest so i kind of knew and i wrote it down i actually wrote it down one thanksgiving when she what she threw in <laughs> and it was never the same so, but I got the gist of what she threw in so that I would at least know how to make it. I also wanted to talk about, yesterday I could have mentioned it with the kids because they, they got their La Bifana, came to visit our house. Let me have the picture of La Bifana up there, the big one I want, this one. This is La Bifana. She's the Italian witch. And the story behind her is... Um, She's an Italian witch. The story, Grandma witch. Grandma witch, yeah. She, what it was is she used to like to keep a very clean, tidy house. And um, three strange men knocked on her door. Well, Baba Fana thought it was kind of strange that three men just knocked on her door. And they wanted to know if she would like to travel with them. And she says, well, who in their right mind would travel with three strange men? So she says, no, she had to clean her house. And they said that they were going to look for the baby Jesus. And so they left. And she's continued to clean. And then she was thinking, maybe, hmm, maybe I should go find that baby Jesus too. Well, by the time she left, the star was had dimmed. It was no longer bright. It didn't lead her to where baby Jesus was. So she now leaves little gifts 
And the little gift that she leaves at our house is chapstick because we have it where it's cold and your lips get chapped. And so the children will find on the Christmas tree, on the Feast of the Epiphany, it's still, it's there. It all of a sudden comes because that's when she comes is that when the wise men would be looking for baby Jesus, she would be visiting. And um, she would put her little gift on the tree. Or in the old days, she used to put it in the shoes of the children that were on the doorstep because people used to put their shoes outside and not inside. But if you have snow, you're not going to want to do that because you're, you'll wake up in the morning and your shoes will be froze or they'll be full of snow. So that's what La Bafana was. And so the kids yesterday got their La Bafana gift. I'm also going to show you, there's going to be a little clip of this, of my uh, Lego block squares that I've been crocheting. I have a big, I took a picture, well, a little video of them on the counter, and I've been working on them. I've got to, I've got to stitch them together, crochet them together. I've been putting a single crochet in the, in the, between each block, and then I'm going to take the rows and put them together. And yesterday, my daughter, Laura, help me arrange them so that we don't have any color next to each other that is exactly the same. There's a lot of colors that are a bit, uh, like a, like there might be a green next to another green, but it's a different kind of green. And there might be a red next to an orange, which is still pretty because blocks are pretty. And so I'm going to show you that. Yesterday I finished my last block for this afghan. So my daughter Laura and I, we were um, trying to place them so that no color is next to each other. Look at how beautiful that is. I told Jim it's going to stay on the counter until I get them all, all um, crocheted together. As you can see, I've been putting some of them together. I've got them, I'm putting a, a single crochet between the blocks. And I've got a lot of them to go. There's 10 in each, or I think, how many were in a row? 20 in a row and five rows across. Aren't they beautiful? This is what my counter looks like. And it's going to stay there. So that's it for today. I hope you all had a great day. I think that was everything I wanted to mention. Um, yeah, I think so. Book my book that's nothing that was my mother's um, word search book when she was okay. when she was in the when she was in the nursing home um, she used to do word search and that helps keep your brain working a little bit because she had Alzheimer's and dementia and it was it was try to help her to focus and to try to recognize letters because after a while you do forget what each letter is and you can't read the words anymore and she had to um, tell you what day it was and who the president was and what month it was and where was she what was her name and what are her children's name because she really she she remembered her children's names but her grandchildren were um, a mystery to her I remember when Jessica and I went to visit with Abigail and she wanted to know who my daughter was. She recognized Abigail. She remembered her being Abba Baby is how she used to call her. And I said, that's my daughter. She goes, it is? She didn't know I had a daughter, but I did have a granddaughter. So I must have had a daughter somewhere or somebody had that Abba Baby. But um, that was, she used to do word things and that was what that book was. Okay, that's it. I will talk about that stuff another day. I know others are waiting for it, and I have to gather my thoughts together because it is a big subject. And I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> you were going to wave. Bye. <laughs>